oh yeah and then i said i forgot because at the beginning we get um leonard matt's friend leonard i think his name was leonard right no like maybe lanny not. lanny <laughs> 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 Let's put that genie back in the bottle. Paint with the colors of the wind, bitch. It's time for two finger point. Power daddy. Our shoes are in the fun. Extra magic hours, which we in turn called extra tragic hours. People call him the naked bull rat. Did you really just two finger point? Here are your hosts, Amber and Kylie. Welcome back to Two Finger Point. I'm Kylie. I'm Amber. And we're going to continue with our spooky October stuff. But first, <laughs> Amber's got some interesting <laughs> news. So first piece of news here is Disney is being second laugh. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> laughing because it's so funny, but it's not funny, but it is. Um, Disney is being sued by a woman for a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> um oh tell us more tell us more uh, so <laughs> she suffered it years ago while riding a water slide at typhoon lagoon wait why are you coming forward now that's the most important question unless here. she is collecting like you know waited until after all of her treatments were concluded ah uh, you're right Maybe. yeah so uh as a result of her oh i'm sorry so the slide was <laughs> <laughs> just tell the people better, better with the name of the slide um <laughs> the so, sorry guys oh i'm like sweating my face is red oh my god <laughs> i'm so sorry for all the youtubers who are watching um so the slide is called the humunga kawabunga <laughs> um it is nearly a vertical drop that's five stories high which forget it you're not catching me on that i don't want to <laughs> vertically drop um, and as a result of her wedgie, she suffered severe lacerations, damages to her internal organs, and even a hernia. Oh, that's a brutal wedgie. Yikes. So the $50,000 lawsuit is accusing Disney of being negligent of informing riders of the proper swimwear and safety warnings. I don't know. Uh, so I want your opinion. <laughs> I mean, okay, I've actually had an experience with this, but it was at Blizzard Beach. Okay. Uh, so it was like this same slide, pretty much. It was like a gigantic slide that's almost straight down. And I wrote it with uh, Allie and then Nicole and Josh. We all mm -hmm. went on it. And I remember like the girls all went first. We got nice little wedgies and then Josh. So for the listeners, my friend is a pretty tall guy. Um, and he would always wear like shorts that went like pretty low, like down to his knees or not down to his knees, but like lower than his knees. And so oh, yeah. there was a lot of pant leg there. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> let, let's just say it was probably like two or more feet. I don't know. Maybe. No, that's probably a lot. I don't know. It was a lot of fabric that went up his butt. <laughs> like, imagine <laughs> your shorts, like, going to, like, your the middle of your shin, and it goes all the way up your leg and up your butt. I, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw this with my own eyes, so it looked painful. So I, I know these things happen. Um, Yikes. I just don't. <laughs> It just sounds very unpleasant for this uh, lady. Do you think damages to her internal organs? Which ones? <laughs> That's what I don't want to know. I feel really <laughs> bad if there's any. You know, actually, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we're girls. If she ooh, got like a frontal wedgie. You're right. That is all. Ooh, no, oof. no, no. Oi. I mean, I get where, like, like, were there really not any kind of safety or precautions to say to wear something or be cautious of this? Because I feel like Disney's pretty good about that. I, when I went on my slide, I remember that, you know, it, it's a very high, high fall 
um, and you're going nearly straight down. So you got to keep your back against, they were very adamant on that. Mm -hmm. Um, but nothing about like proper way to avoid this. So I could see this being an issue. I can see the issue. I just wonder what Disney does to prevent it going forward. Like, I mean, having a nearly vertical slide is not a good idea. Or maybe can we do inner tubes? I do love an inner tube moment. I lo- That's really my preferred method of like going down water slides now. I've lost the thrill and I never wanted to ride these vertical ones yeah. anyway. Something about like, is this one of the ones where the floor drops out? Uh, No. Okay, because that, like, either way, though, I'm not into those either. I never rode one of those because that's terrifying. Have you no. rode one of those? No, and I don't think I ever could. I think uh-uh. this one, you you start sitting and then, like, you kind of just go for a little bit and then drop. And then you go, yeah. yeah. It doesn't sound like a fun time, honestly. I mean, it probably, it must be because enough people do it, but honestly, it doesn't sound great. I just went on it because everyone else was and I didn't want to be stuck waiting by myself yeah that's I get the only it. reason why i did it <laughs> i wouldn't Ugh. go out of my way to do this yeah I, i'm I... a lazy river kind of girl holla me too <laughs> literally i'm so over the thrill seeking stuff now like it's just same yeah i'm over it we're too old for that <laughs> <laughs> um okay so next bit of news you want to cover this sure okay uh so Disney Plus is going to start cracking down on the password sharing like Netflix. Um, so they're starting boo. this in Yeah, boo. So they're starting this in Canada. <laughs> but you know how this goes. Usually the other countries Again? follow suit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Netflix did too. They tested in Canada. Poor Canada. Shout yeah. out to Canada because they're Canada. getting the short end. <laughs> And so they're going to start tracking to make sure all users are in the same location, which like, what if you're traveling or you're, let's say your daughter's at college, like, does she, you have to pay for a separate account for her? No, this is obnoxious. Cause I like agree to both of those things. What if you like, yeah, we're, we're on the go nowadays, you know, like not as many of us are staying stagnant in one spot and streaming services are, are supposed to kind of follow the ever moving like that's the whole point of why we don't want cable and we're quote unquote mm-hmm. cutting cords like what is this you're attaching essentially like these invisible cords to these streaming services it's ridiculous yeah yep i <laughs> just like airbnb had its moment and now we're back to hotels i i can see us moving back to cable real soon no kidding um, but yeah they're I mean, claiming oh sorry go ahead go, no no go ahead um, just... they're they're claiming that certain tiers are going to be excluded from this. So probably like, oh, pay an extra five dollars. It's probably the top tier right now that they're jumping up to that eighteen ninety nine. Like mm-hmm. I just got another email that was saying, like, go ahead if you want to change it. And I think I missed the cutoff for my next bill date just because I was focused on some other stuff, but I'm definitely gonna jump down because I have the the triple bundle with ESPN and Hulu. Mm-hmm. And my ESPN is garbage anyway, the app. So it's like, what the frick frack am I even paying for? So yeah, it's dumb. <laughs> no, it's it's ridiculous that they're cracking down on this because it's like, so you're not only are you increasing the price of it right now because they just said they mm-hmm. were going to add tiers, which is something they didn't have before, but now you're going to crack down on password sharing. So you're going to basically triple the price and then you're going to say, no, you have to double pay it if you have somebody who, like you said, a daughter or a or a son who's in college who wants who clearly can't afford it and wants to still kind of be able to use it like yeah it this i mean yeah this is just every little thing with disney is just nickel and dime like people are gonna start hearing the word disney and think how much do i owe now for just thinking about disney literally like it just it's so sad we've talked about it yeah i felt i feel like I guess, like, you can understand where it's coming from in the park, because, yeah, you're there. Like, okay, they're going to try to nickel and dime you while you're in their, in their parks. But it's, like, outside of the parks, too. It's like, come on. Yeah, and the parks are ridiculous, too. I was talking to Nicholas about that tonight. Mm-hmm. He didn't understand, like, the whole thing and how it works. And he's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's crazy. And, and and I love to see it from a person who's not like a big Disney fans perspective, because yeah. like, they're like, I can't believe people would pay this because right. you, you mainly see people who are the Disney fan who are like, oh yeah, 
will pay it. So I like, I like to see the other side because it's like, yeah, you're right. This is ridiculous. And it's nice to kind of get that reality check again. Yeah. Cause a six flags, six flags does not do that. Mm-hmm. I, I've never been to Universal. I, it's, it seems like they don't. Not from what I remember, but I mean, maybe now just because like they've, they're definitely honing in on that like Harry Potter franchise and now the Mario franchise. Yeah, um, but you don't movie. hear as much about like, oh, you can get this pass and this pass and this pass. You just hear about what they have to offer. You're right. They, I mean, they do just, they have a couple passes, but they're not nickel and diamond. You're right. It's really, it is a really different atmosphere. Like they, yeah, they're not nickel and diming you there. I don't feel that way. Yeah. So, so Disney, it's just a Disney thing and it's, I'm sorry, you're not worth it, especially with the direction you're going, but I'll get yeah. off my soapbox and we'll <laughs> save, save our thoughts for later. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Um, okay, so segment of the week, guys. So getting into spooky, spooky season and just uh, just to get into spooky season, I am wearing one of my sweaters, my sweaters I got in the park <laughs> for the uh, viewers super- who can't see. Wow, my it's hair super out of cute. <laughs> God, okay, it's there. Anyway, sorry, that was ridiculous. My hair wouldn't move. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> spooky segment of the week. We want to talk about some of our va- uh, favorite Disney Halloween movies um, from back in the good old days. <laughs> back in our days. Back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> so our first one, we're just going to talk about the best one up up in front. Uh, so we have Lizzie McGuire, and the episode is called Night of the Day of the Dead. I love this episode so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, this one was good. So I caught up on this one today just because I wanted to be fresh with this one. <laughs> um, I've got to say, <laughs> I I kind of forgot the premise of this episode, and low-key, it got a little, like, spooky at some points where Mm -hmm. I was like oh my god as a kid this probably would have scared me a little bit I remember the first time I watched it before you realized it's a prank like it's just like oh my gosh what's gonna happen next like it was a little thrilling oh my gosh it was and also they did a good job of I mean I laugh now being an adult but like the zombification of like Lizzie yes like her (laughs) makeup was scary like as a kid that would have definitely scared me but it was just funny to see her walking around like this yes she (laughs) did really good so if you've never seen this spoiler alert (laughs) um so lizzie at her school is having a halloween dance and kate is like leading the planning of it and lizzie and miranda want to be a part of planning the dance too and she's being mean to them of course and giving them like minimal like bare minimum space for their ideas. Like she gives Lizzie the janitor closet to decorate. (laughs) And then Miranda wants to incorporate her Mexican culture holiday, which is Dia de los Muertos, which is the first time I had ever heard of it when I saw this episode. This was pretty cool. (laughs) Um, So she's like, fine, whatever. You can have this table. So she sets things up. Her parents are there dropping things off and help her. Well, apparently Kate has pissed off Miranda's ancestors. And so <laughs> Gordo turns into a bobblehead and Matt went like as himself inside out. So like all his guts are out and whatnot. And so all that's left is his eyeball with like what you assume is like his cremation ashes. <laughs> and then Lizzie is dressed as a clown for her normal costume and then she becomes a zombie so it's like extra scary you're right that is the scary because you're right because it's not just the zombie because right like you can get past that but it's like the clown stuff too and ever since like all the the you know the it movies have come out and since like the 2016 clown sightings in the cities and stuff Mm -hmm. it's all too much now yeah (laughs) so yeah (laughs) but it's all it turns out they're all pranking kate to teach her a lesson about being mean Oh, it was so good. Oh my gosh. And then like the whole thing when they're like at the end when Miranda is like, you have to put the the blood in the um and the dirt on you. <laughs> and so she basically has to she like has Kate pour a punch bowl on herself and cake and they start she starts like having her dance around and make all these like funny noises. Um, and that's when she like realizes basically that it's a prank. It um, kills me when Matt's like, now rub your head and pat your rump. <laughs> <laughs> um 
<laughs> but no, I so I put in my notes. So I said, um, oh shit, no, Lizzie is fucking terrifying. And then and then I put in my notes, Kate with my yeah, arms out. Kate. <laughs> That part got me. I thought that was funny. And I so the part this too, I said when she breaks the door, like handle when she's trying to oh, get yeah, into the gender closet tossed. and she yeah, she just tossed it. I said the comedy behind that. It's just they did such a good job with Lucy McGuire just across the board outside oh. of this episode too. I just it was a really good show. You know, I wish they would have had Ethan in this episode. Yeah, he wasn't in it. Oh, um, they could have done good with him too like giving him some stupid costume or something that's what i was thinking um have him be like the vampire to the vampira yeah i don't know but it was too good i mean honestly um oh but i did i put a note too that i noticed which is irrelevant to the actual episode but i noticed so the guy who plays gordo um he's already kind of growing like a five o'clock shadow in the episode i noticed like he has like a mild like beard thing going on oh. it was weird it was huh. like right here i was like oh hey how old is he like i'm pretty sure he's like their age i can look him up yeah adam lamberg but how old were they at the time like 14 or so oh uh, yeah so of course like he's he's going through puberty he's, gain- oh, he's no, getting his... he's a little older he's... so fun fact uh the day before we we're recording this was hillary Duff's birthday so she just turned 36 uh, he is 39. Oh, okay. So he so. is a little bit older. Okay. Well, they he had a baby face then because yeah. you don't notice it unless you really look. And I I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then I said I forgot because at the beginning we get um Leonard, Matt's friend. Leonard? I think his name was Leonard, right? No, like maybe Lanny? Leonard's not. Lanny. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> Is that one of the other kids that were on just like a couple episodes? Because I know oh, there was what, Oscar and then I'll say there was one more, but but I know <laughs> I'm right about Belinda, that girl. Um, Melinda. <laughs> oh man. Great. I, I'm like, I know I'm right about this. You're like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome guys so that's hilarious the, you know. that's gonna be a clip <laughs> oh i love that yes please um i love that for you guys you guys get to enjoy that firsthand um <laughs> oh, okay so our next show um i had to throw this in there was boy meets world if you watch a show you know what episode i'm gonna say the scream episode which is officially named and then there was sean so this is known as a scream episode. Like they even say that on Pod Meets World. Um, but <laughs> it's basically they're in in school and there's a guy in ghost space running around and they're all dying off one by one. Um, and at this time, Corey and Topanga are broken up because he's trash and cheated on her with Lauren. Um, never Hate will him. forgive him for that. Um, but yeah, and then. They're all dying off one by one, and eventually it's down to Sean, Corey, and Topanga, and Sean unmasks the killer, and it's Sean, and he puts Corey and Topanga's hands together and jumps out the window, and then, surprise, Sean was dreaming, and he wakes up because he really wants them together. Um, And then Jennifer Love Hewitt was randomly in this. I think it's because she was dating Will Friedle, the guy who plays Eric oh interesting he, he talks Hot about take. that a little bit in the podcast they do so i think they they had to have been dating at this time then to get her on she was really young at this time then yeah she was probably late teens i'm gonna guess i was gonna say i mean it was like it was definitely after i know what you did last summer i think because i think they do a nod to that oh okay no i mean i'm another one of those like classic 90s Halloween episodes right Mm -hmm. like and especially getting in that like spooky scary of like Scream being one of those like top movies around the time so and it was pretty graphic for like a a family sitcom like I don't know if you remember because you said it's been a while but Mm -hmm. like the first guy Kenny to die who is just a random guy in this one episode but like he gets a pencil shoved in his forehead 
like which oh my is God. what kills him. And then Feeny's got scissors to the back, and we're killing Feeny. Like it was an intense episode. We just didn't care in the nineties. We were like, forget it, scare everybody. <laughs> like no viewer discretion advised. Like seriously, they had some wild ones. They also had the one. This had to have been the following year because I think Matt Lawrence was on both of them and he only did the last two or three seasons. But um, it had Candace Cameron and ironically, she's playing a witch. Do you remember that one? I don't remember these. No. She was like trying to, I think she had to like sacrifice a virgin. And <laughs> was it Sean? I don't remember. Or maybe, I don't know. They're like sacrificing to the devil, which is kind of funny. Oh my God. I mean, not who so she ironic. Is today. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't tell how we feel about it <laughs> uh here's another one that we'll give like a quick little synopsis to was even stevens a very scary story um so this is another episode that was kind of like it was like all a dream and so ren was working working <laughs> she was working great she was working <laughs> with coach tugna and principal wexler to brainwash all the students to be perfect students like her oh my god <laughs> um and then lewis realizes what she what's going on and like tries to find a way to stop it this like a like a superhero movie like is it this like a superhero dream i feel like no, i vaguely remember it was this. like a, a horror like everyone's acting weird and he's just like what's going on here and then he finds out it's his sister's like gone mad scientist on the school and then he's i don't remember it's been a while since i've seen it i don't yeah. remember if he's just trying to get away or if he's trying to stop her i don't right. know okay but. that's an interesting that's funny i mean that definitely <laughs> plays into their personalities and their characters especially like ren yes uh, so i love that i'm like definitely gonna have to go back and watch they had some weird episodes like this. Like, this very much gives me influenza, too. Okay. Um, the musical one? No. <laughs> Are you kidding? We went wait, wait. to the moon. Oh, I mean, yeah, I watched that one. with Influenza, though. That's the name of the episode. Even Steven's Influenza, because she has the flu. And it's a oh. nightmare. Oh. No, I remember it being, like, that one being a dream sequence as well. But I yeah. forgot that she was sick during that episode. I of course hello who don't who doesn't remember that whole dream sequence literally i was like um are you okay <laughs> you were like do you even know disney like <laughs> uh that's funny uh so the next one um we're just gonna get through it but it's yeah. the proud family a hero for halloween um not my favorite episode of the proud family um i feel like this is my least favorite episode of the proud family it was a yeah. great show but uh basically penny turns into a superhero for the night and she's just like going around helping people in the town i don't know maybe it needs a rewatch but i just feel like they could have done more like i really liked the black history episode where yeah. like they're all different people from black history and i think they could have done something like that or i was telling you like it would have been fun if like her family was like monsters and like bb and cc were like terrifying twins yes whatever i think it could have been way fun in the era that we were with all these good like live action shows with a good episode i'm surprised they couldn't make a good animated one for this one like i'm yeah and i'm they, surprised they did they had such iconic episodes like not only the black history one but the lpdz mm -hmm. that was a great episode <laughs> so they just yeah they just missed the mark here i mean I get they maybe they were just trying to play into the fact that Penny was really kind and you know was a, like a vigilante of some sorts with like helping people but I don't know I guess that is that is kind of boring right it's yeah. it's very la um it's not not for Halloween like yeah. that could have just been a generic any day episode. episode yeah okay so one that we're less like wah, wah, about <laughs> <laughs> is the that's so raven episode and the name was don't have a cow <laughs> um and so <laughs> this one so alana um has a halloween party and she doesn't invite raven and chelsea um and raven chelsea and raven get their hands on a spell book um and they start ca they cast a spell to be like invited and to win the costume contest um their spell ends up working 
But as a result, <laughs> they start turning into cows and they are slowly becoming more and more cow like. So have you seen this one recently? Because I watched this one recently too. I didn't, but I I do remember it pretty well. Like I remember oh. her being like, just out of nowhere, she starts chewing. She's like, Chaos, what's in my mouth? Oh, it's cut. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So it starts with like the whole um Eddie getting invited to the party, but like yeah. not them. And I forgot about the tall basketball girl who was in love yeah, with Eddie. I was just going to ask, was it because she liked him that oh she, my God, she got loved invited? Him. She loved him and she always, but she bullied him. Like she would like push yeah. him into like a locker She'd or like, something. I love you. Boom. <laughs> and then he'd go flying, which was like the <laughs> best part. Oh, um, Orlando Brown. Oh, he was so much. Um, and then it's important to obviously mention, like, for those who don't know, because you probably live under a rock if you don't know, um, who Alana was. Um, hello, Cheetah Girls. Adrienne Balone. Did I say her last name wrong? Yeah, Balone. Balone. Okay, good. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I'm not doing great on the picking people's names right today. So <laughs> True. Uh, <laughs> I have to confirm. I'm like, is my name Amber? Like... <laughs> um but yeah so um so the reason why they turned into cows is because the whole thing was they were eating at the chill grill (laughs) (laughs) throwback um and the burgers got switched so chelsea's veggie burger was given to raven and chelsea ate a bite of the burger and what ended up happening was she was like doing this whole thing where she was <laughs> she was like writing poetry and like moping around and like being like, I can't believe I ate meat. And she had a little pin that had a cow on it, like the picture of a cow and an X through it. Or like a like a stop yeah, sign. The no. Um, I thought I was wondering, I'm like, did it have to do with the burger? Cause I remember Chelsea was a vegetarian. Yes. So I'll sum it up real quick. That button fell into like the the pot, and that's basically why they turned into oh, cows. You're right. <laughs> so there's that, and then also, um, I guess I'll I'll spoil. It's been so long. I'm gonna spoil the episode. So basically, which was this was so crazy because I forgot this. It was all a vision. They were still sitting at the chill grill <laughs> after everything. A vision. Yeah, so so they had, they turned into cows fully, right? And then all of a sudden, like, it just goes back and it goes, and it's like, you know, her eye. Yeah. And then she's sitting there and she goes, and Chelsea's about to eat the burger. And she goes, no, no, Chelsea, he switched the burgers on accident. And she grabs them real quick and she switches them. So it was like an elongated vision, basically. Oh my God. I was like, wait a minute, did I just get played for 20 minutes? I was so offended. Gosh, they that show is just always great too. Another good one. Um, and just a side note, while I was watching it, I had um, I was talking to Eric on the phone, and uh, he was like, "I was like, I'm watching the That's a Raven Halloween episode," and he was like, "I never really watched That's a Raven. Like, what's going on?" And so I had to like, explain it to him, and he was like, "So I don't get the visions," and he kept asking me like all these questions about visions. Oh, uh, someone needs to uh, be stuck strapped to a chair and watching it for 20 hours i'm not even kidding because <laughs> he needs to see it that all that is a great show i was surprised he didn't watch that because that wasn't like an a later show you know like because he is a he's more of an elder millennial than us by a few years only like six years but still um, that one was like an all-around encompassing show like i know we had a female lead but it really did lean into like the male characters as well it was really male female yeah you know it didn't I, feel over feminine I until mean, later seasons raven definitely owned the show because yeah. she's great however i feel like everybody was equally as funny on that yeah. show like eddie was hilarious in his own way chelsea was hilarious victor Corey, yes like, everyone was so funny like you, they walk into the room on a scene and you're like oh what are they gonna say yeah so that's what i'm saying so I'm surprised he didn't see that show, but I don't think he was big into Disney. So well, I think, like, uh, into the Disney Channel, I should say. He was into Disney. <laughs> duct tape him to a chair. You heard it here first, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch that show. It's so funny. Even to this day, a weird fact, but on my first date with Nicholas, I don't know how we got on the topic, but we just started talking about That's So Raven for a while. Yeah such a good like what a good conversation too 
no yeah i was like explaining he was like i don't get the vision so she's psychic and he got that but he was like <laughs> he was asking funny questions like who knows she's psychic like how did she find out she was psychic who else is psychic why do they believe that she's psychic like he's asking these funny questions and i'm like eric it's a disney show like it was a kid's show like you, you can't psychoanalyze a disney show <laughs> i was gonna say like if he's questioning like how the visions work literally the theme song explains it you're right i should just be like here listen to this <laughs> <laughs> No, I was like, yeah, she just like randomly gets these visions like and they are about to happen, but like she doesn't know how it's going to play out, but she like can try to she basically like tries to either work towards that vision or change the vision so it doesn't happen. But yeah. it's usually her just being silly and quirky with a bunch of people. <laughs> she tries so. to solve the situation, then she ends up misbehaving. Misbehaving. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not gonna try to hit her high notes. <laughs> no. I am no raven at all. I can that never. wasn't even trying. Like, oh no, no. I know. I'm just saying <laughs> for those who are like, wow, Kylie's tone deaf. No, I just no, I'm not raven. We're, we're not her. We can't do it. We won't even try. That girl has a voice. Acapella. She, does. she doesn't need auto tuning. <laughs> um, yeah, I just took the alto approach. Me too. I'm like baritoning it over here. I'm like, yeah, whoa. Okay, I'll do this one. Only because this one is probably one of my favorite ones. And this one did actually, like, the other ones kind of spooked me. But I feel like this one really did kind of, like, sketch me out for a while. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. So it's the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, the ghost in Sweet uh, 613. Uh, six thir sweet 613? Wow. That's where we're at today. Great. <laughs> sweet 613 is known for being a haunted suite at the Tipton Hotel. Uh, Maddie, London, Arwen, Esteban, and the twins decide to spend a night in the hotel room and try to summon some of the ghosts. Oh yeah, so basically everyone everyone was in... So the whole premise of the show starts... Okay, let me back up. So the whole premise <laughs> of the episode, it starts with Zach scaring Cody and he's constantly like scaring him. And Cody's kind of like a little fraidy cat. So he you know falls for it every time basically. So they find out about this whole ghost in Sweet 613 and they basically say like, I dare you, like the twins are like, I dare you to stay in, in the room. Well, I dare you. And so they get everyone else to come and stay in there and they do like a little seance moment um, to try to like get some, like to speak to the ghost on the other side, um, especially the ghost that like haunts the room specifically, um, which there's a whole story behind that. Um and I feel like this episode had a lot of jump scares in it in general, like, especially like with Zach jumping out to scare Cody and stuff at the beginning, like, yeah. and for kids, like, this is like, you know, your first experience with like some jump scares probably. So you're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, And I am not a jump scare fan. I hate a jump scare. They were talking about the St. Mark's Hotel and um, Esteban is talking about the hotel, like the, the, the uh, ghosts and stuff. And he goes, this is not a joking matter. And then Maddie goes, clearly you haven't seen my paycheck. And I know, I don't know, something <laughs> about that just like made me laugh. I was like, I get it, girl, because you're working part time. Um, but anyway, so like they're like they sit down like in the room and they do like their little seance to try to call the ghost of the hotel room. And Esteban like gets really creepy in this episode. Yeah. Do you like, remember this? Yeah, he's like possessed, not possessed, but like the ghost is like using him as a channel. Yeah. And he like. So he has like these big teeth, like something about his mouth, like he had a big mouth. And so he does this like, ah, ha, 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 ha. and then he like channels the ghost. And I remember like, he had like crazy eyes and I was like, whoa, it like, that he did freaked a, me the out. The actor did a really good job of that part. <laughs> so good. I'm like, you should be in scary movies because you terrify me. Yeah. So yeah, they do their whole thing. And, you know, Zach and like, and Loki, each of the people basically kind of make fun of the seance and because they're making fun of it, they kind of get taken away. Like the ghost or the spirits take them away and it's just Zach left. And so he's scared. He's scared. And Loki, they were all pranking him basically. So it wasn't real. Um, the seance didn't really happen. They all just band together to scare him to help Cody because not only had he been like pranking all of them with like other things, but also like scaring Cody and everyone was kind of like over it. So that was funny. But at the end of the episode, they go back, 
Cody and Zach and Cody go back into the hotel room to go get Cody's blankie because he left it there, um, his prized possession. <laughs> and the ghost of the room goes, here you go, and hands it to him. And then she walks back into her portrait. And they both look at each other and scream and run out of the room. <laughs> so it was a good it was an interesting ending. way to end a kid a kid episode yeah I, I i remember i think we were a little bit older like pre-teen or mm-hmm. maybe teens when the show came out yeah like early teens and so i had seen a handful of scary movies i was like that kid that i loved horror movies and then like okay i don't know nowadays no like me neither. If there's like gore or anything, no, thank you. I I was like wanting that story, and then like to find out it was a prank. I was like, that's bogus. And then yeah. the ending, I'm like, okay, it's a little something, but I wanted it to be real. You know, I did too, and so I was kind of disappointed by the prank. I like, I was like, okay, I guess like vengeance for Cody, but like I really wanted it because like with the whole like when like I said Esteban, like he kind of creeped me out. Yes. So like I wanted it to be real. <laughs> So yeah, that was disappointing. But yeah, it was nice that they kind of turned it around. But I think the reason why they did that is obviously it is a kid's show. So like mm-hmm. they can't legitimately scare children. Right. So I get Gotta it. Gotta be fake. <laughs> hmm. Um, and our last one um is Phil of the Future. And it the episode was just titled Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um but Pim which is Phil's little sister um has a friend named Debbie and I I I would like softly call her a friend I feel like she just kind of followed Pim around and Pim oh was God. just like whatever <laughs> Pim didn't oh, like she, her she was a, she was like a straight up like fan she was like I love you Pim like yeah. let me help you and she was like I hate you please get out of my life yeah <laughs> I never liked Pim, but I feel like if I go back and watch it now, I think I would probably relate to her more. <laughs> I had a love hate with her because I liked her sarcasm, but also she kind of irritated me. Yeah, she it just like was too much. Like there yeah. was never a softness shown. But anyway, back on here. Um, so <laughs> she had a friend named Debbie who was played by Cape Hannah Baker, and. In this episode, she's revealed to be a cyborg, which honestly, the way she's so peppy all the time, it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's enslaving everybody in the town and like they're locked up and she's making them all make cupcakes. <laughs> Very on brand for her. So Phil and Keely um, come to on this, kind of like Lewis with Ren. Mm-hmm. um and they have to stop her so to resolve it they end up eating all the cupcakes and like she ends up being like no and like has a meltdown and they save their town <laughs> but it's, it's just a weird episode Bill of the future was like a fever dream show in general it really like was nothing made sense so honestly this is on brand for the show that it <laughs> didn't make sense <laughs> It really was. That's what like, did. They're time travelers and they brought a caveman back with them. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. What um, year did they wait? What year did they go back to again? Um, was they it were like... they were from 2020 or 2121 and then yeah. when did that show come out? 2004, I think. So they went back to 2004. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just because I wondered, I thought for some reason they went back to even like the future of what we were watching, but I don't think that's right. I don't think so. I think it was, like, current time. Okay. Because they had gone back to, like, Curtis's time. For those who don't know, Curtis is the caveman. (laughs) And then they were trying to get back home to 2121, but their time machine broke down in our time zone. And now he's Phil. Phil Phil of the future. (laughs) He's a 21st century man. Oh, wait, no, it's 22nd century man. God, I am so bad today. Get me out of here. Oh, my God. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Okay. So that was our spooky ooky. We're going to roll into our favorite part of the episode. <laughs> our two our finger points. Two finger points. Um, do you want to go first while I pull mine? Oh. Yeah. So okay. I, mine, <laughs> I'm a little heated. So oh. going back to our news on the Disney Plus, like I'm really considering just canceling my account. I Because I really, the only time I do use it pretty much is to research for this podcast Mm -hmm. sometimes i'll go on a lizzie binge or a raven binge but that's it like 
it's maybe twice a year so I, I'm kind of tired of giving Disney my money um I mean they took a lot of it when I worked for them and uh I got another story to tell you guys um back in 2020 I was going to take my husband to Disneyland because he's never been I was going to take him for his birthday I forked out eight hundred dollars they shut down for covid um i call to see what they can do i waited two hours on the phone on hold to get somebody and she told me too bad so sad essentially and hung up on me they said like i could use it in the future was i able to use it in the future no no my tickets disappeared on the app so they stole eight hundred dollars from me and just all the nickel and diming and now you're on a nickel and dime uh Disney Plus, like I'm just ready to say goodbye. I don't blame you. <clears throat> and I yes, I remember when this happened. I was so disheartened for you because you guys were yeah. gonna have like a really great trip. And yeah, COVID happened, so I understood, but like I was like, Yeah, they're totally gonna reimburse you because like mm-hmm. they should. <laughs> I was I was offended for you because that's really disappointing, especially with because it was going to be Nicholas's first time, right? Yeah, he's that's never so... gone, and honestly, I don't think he cares to go. I think it was more of me kind of pushing on him, but like, yeah, uh, when we have kids and stuff, <clears throat> I honestly don't see us going. I yeah, what I don't see what the point is at this point. It's just a, it's a money grab. I mean, yeah, it's um, not fun. No, and I guess I'll, <clears throat> I guess this kind of, wow, let me get some water and I can roll into my two finger point because this <laughs> actually kind of connects my two finger point. So yeah, I mean like, so my two finger point of the week is that I feel like Disney is starting to feel less and less like Disney every time I go to the park. <clears throat> like I'm feeling like I'm not con- connected to anything. They're really thwarting a lot of their like well-known rides and just converting it into the the new stuff and I get like there's updating that has to happen we can't stay the same forever but like there were some real classics like I'm 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 really excited that we're doing things for Tiana and for the princess and the frog but I'm I'm just like I wish it wasn't at the expense of Splash Mountain yeah so like and right now at Disneyland you know Spl- uh, not Splash Space Mountain is down for refurbishment for mm-hmm. a while um and it just feels like everything classic is kind of disappearing from Disney like they like I constantly keep saying like they really don't care about the adults or the people who you know, are getting a little bit older. And I get it. We are not the main target, but we kind of are. We're the ones mm-hmm. with the wallets. Yeah. Um. So it's just like, yeah. I mean, I think their new prey, like, I, like I've said, I think their new prey is Gen Z. They're over us. They don't care anymore. And it's really disappointing. So like, I'm feeling a disconnect to the parks. And it's really sad because I have the magic key. I should be feeling more connected than ever. Yes. Yeah. But I, I feel... Like, I feel like the magic's kind of been killed for you, if anything, since you've gotten that key. Yeah, which is really disappointing because I really thought it was going to kind of like lift it up for me. Mm-hmm. And it just I think I think having the experience of not having to pay for a ticket really gives you a different perspective of like what they're kind of doing to you each time you come into the park. So yeah. it's kind of it's like, wow yeah like they they give you the magic keys basically so you'll come in and spend all this money like that that's what they anticipate and you do because there's no other option so yeah off my soapbox on that it's just it's just (laughs) really it's it's disappointing I I I hope I mean again it's been a decade since I've been to Disney World I hope because there is so much more area for it that they are preserving some of that classic Disney but Disneyland is the original park. So it's a, mm-hmm. it's, uh, that's where I feel the disappointment. It's like, well, you guys are kind of the ones that are really supposed to preserve it. Like that's your job and you're not really doing it great. Just, so that's, that's where my grievance comes from. Yeah. And yeah, just like all the stuff they're bringing in, like Marvel and Star Wars, that's not Disney. Yeah. Like, Disney may own it now, but that is not Disney. Disney is the princesses and the, evolving technology Mm -hmm. or at least back in the day (laughs) like the animatronics and stuff um yeah no I definitely agree um 
I'm I'm just because I'm already not into the big Marvel thing. I'm not a big superhero girl. So like the infiltration of that coming into I mean, I'm glad luckily at Disneyland it is over in California Adventure, but it is kind of slowly taking over that park. Yeah, and honestly people are over it. I'm I used to be a huge Marvel fan. I'm over it. Like probably not gonna watch any more movies or series. Like I'm just it's so much. It's oversaturated yeah. and <clears throat> They did too much of a good thing, and I I don't know much about Star Wars. I was talking with Nicholas on this too, like I don't, I can't say for Star Wars, but eventually it's gonna get to that point. And he's like, eh, I'm pretty sure people are over Star Wars too. They are. It's yeah. It's like I said, Disney kind of hones in on one thing and kind of tears it apart until it's not good anymore. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Where it's mm-hmm. like we're they're not preserving the thing that's good. They're like they're monetizing on it all the way to the ground and it's like i get that you're a corporation first but i mean what happened to disney yeah like walt created entertainment and joy and magic and this is just money yeah (sighs) so yeah you know (laughs) there's that because i you know whatever but i mean (laughs) so i guess you know rolling out of that and into something a little bit more fun so our story of the week segment um so i'll give a little you know story synopsis on so my time at the dcp um i worked at tomorrowland terrace that was one of the restaurants i worked and occasionally if you were if you were so fortunate as a college program participant you could work dessert party and this was extremely rare because for some reason all the full-timers or, you know, seasonal, all the ones that weren't, you know, college program, they love to work this event. And I figured out why. So um, (laughs) first, before you do it, you have to go through dessert party training, which training in any food service thing for Disney is always the best part because you, you have to be able to give a full rounded experience to guests. So they make sure that at any location that you go to, you have to try a tidbit of everything at that restaurant. And it's not much, but it's enough that you Mm -hmm. get to try everything. So going into dessert party training, you get to try each little bit of thing to figure out like what you're serving. So little tartlets and everything and all the little, you know, cookies, you get to try a little bit. So that was fun. I always loved training in that aspect. Um, You always knew you were going to eat that day. You're like, yes. Um, What were some of the desserts? Like what were some examples, if you remember? Gosh, you know what? Let me pull up my Instagram really quick because there was a picture of it and I can describe the ones that I see. That was me training. So that was all the stuff I got to try. Or was this afterwards? No, this was afterwards. So actually, so <laughs> let me, I'll explain that. So there was, it looks like some kind of a like apple streusel. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. In the front with like some drizzle on it. Um. There's a little key lime tartlet, a tiramisu mousse, I think. Oh my gosh. A, some kind of like cookies, one with like vanilla mousse and then chocolate mousse, I think. And then I think this was a peanut butter chocolate tart in the middle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so... This picture was actually after dessert party. So one of the benefits of dessert party, this was the one place that they didn't throw away the food. If you want, well, they did, but you got a chance to eat it. So that was the benefit of dessert party was afterwards, if there was anything left over, you got to eat it. So um, that was fun. Um, Also, you get to watch the fireworks because it was a firework dessert party. So basically you're serving... You're serving them up until the fireworks show, and then you have to go stand on the side afterwards so that you're not blocking their view for the fireworks. So you can't serve them during the fireworks. So you get a full experience of watching the fireworks, eating desserts afterwards, and yeah, you're working late, but I mean, I don't really see any downside to this. So I guess, yeah, looking back, I can see why they were like, no, CPs, we're not going to give you this because this is a pretty sweet gig and it's I think when you worked dessert party it was set yeah because we closed the kitchen of Tomorrowland so this was after that was all closed and then this was a separate like four hour shift I think okay I don't know how long the shift itself was a dream it really was um 
And so they're doing a dessert party we talked about here at Disneyland, um, which is the same thing. It's like a dessert party fireworks show. And I kind of want to see that. But they also have one for World of Color that they that they always do um, in California Adventure. And I've never seen the World of Color show. So I've always thought how interesting would it be to be on the other side to have, not that I want to be like serve, but you know, to be like on the guest side of something that I served at one point. Yeah. Like, I guess it was like a reward to be able to work it. So I guess, I don't know if I, I can't remember how I got the shift. I think I either got lucky or maybe they just liked me and I was doing a good job, but like, it wasn't very many CPs that got that opportunity. So I thought that was really cool that I got to do that. And it was something different. Okay. So we're going to move into our game, but we're doing a buzz fit, but buzz fizz. Okay. <laughs> what did I do to you? Oh no. <laughs> a buzz feed quiz. There we go. Okay. But our quiz, do you want to tell them what it's, what it is? Ah, yes, of course. So our BuzzFeed quiz this week is find out which cheetah girl matches your inner diva. Wait, you're on power. Theme. I know. <laughs> so if you're, well, yeah, if you're on an app that doesn't give you the video of our podcast, I've got a cheetah girl, well, not a cheetah girl, but a cheetah print headband <laughs> on. I've been in a mood lately, like I've been wearing, I have three in different colors, like I have this one, I have one that's like a darker brown, not dark brown, but like, yeah, like a darker, I don't know, you know, I'm trying to say, and then um, I have a gray one, and I've been like, just cheetah girl headbands, like cheetah girl, um, Blair vibe. I was lately. just gonna say, okay, Blair Waldorf, <laughs> <Yes>. like, <laughs> it's been my mood this week. It's so funny because I was watching Gossip Girl earlier today too, and it's the season with Hillary Duff in it. Great season, or I, I like her episodes. They're, oh yeah, no, they're spicy. <laughs> I no, it was such a different side of Hillary's acting that she I was wanted like, to get away from Disney. I was like, go off, Queen. I loved yeah. it. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry. All right, so we'll get into it. Do you have your quiz up? Yes. Okay. Before we start, I want to ask because I was trying to think of this. I'm like, I have no idea for myself. Who do you think you're going to end up with? Or did you ever have a cheetah girl you ad- identified with growing up? I mean, I always felt like I kind of wanted to be Galleria. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I feel like I kind of. Yeah, I always I always wanted to be Galleria, but I guess I feel like I embodied kind of all four of them. Yeah, that's fair. What I about feel you? like I never really thought about it to be honest. Like I I liked them all. Well, okay, yeah. no, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Don't give her that. Don't give her yeah, credit. No, 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 no. Get her out of here. I like three of them. Um but um I I never like thought which is kind of weird because I feel like any time there was like a girl band or whatever in elementary school, you're like, no, I'm this one. Yeah. Right. I never thought that with them. But of course, Galleria like wanted to be that leader. But I probably, yeah. I mean, I'm probably Chanel. Got the mommy issues going on. I felt the same way, but I was like, is that me? Maybe. <laughs> So I, I guess I'll go with Chanel. Um, I don't know who I'm going to end up with, though. That's so funny. I That's so funny because I was I think it was like the boss girl vibes that Galleria put out that like I wanted to be. But I think you're mm-hmm. right. I think I, I knew in my hearts of hearts that I was definitely like a Chanel. And I was like, I don't hate that. But like we're, we're definitely choochies. <laughs> we are. OK, let's start our quiz. OK, OK. <laughs> What's your favorite color? And our options are pink, purple, yellow, and blue. And I could see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to pick it, but my favorite color is blue. So one point for aqua. Gross. Wait a minute. Who's purple? Who's purple? See, okay. The pink and the purple, I'm a little fuzzy, fuzzy on. on right? I'm going to assume purple's going to be Chanel. So gallery can have pink. I think you're right. And I don't know why. Um, I don't. I forget her name. Sabrina Dorinda. Bryan. Dorinda. Thank you. But <laughs> she, she can't be yellow. She's blonde. Wait, no, she is. She is. I remember her wearing the yellow. Okay. Do I? Oh, it's based off their jumpsuits. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's You're why I was right. like, wait. I think it's orange. But okay. 
but I guess nobody can like orange. I don't know. Okay, I guess girls don't like orange. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what is your style? Sweet and simple, trendy and coordinated, athletic and casual, or luxurious and designer? I'm definitely going athletic and casual. That is definitely my vibe. I think I want my style to be something else. But like, if I'm being totally honest, like that's my vibe. Like I'm, I'm like a t-shirt and like Nike short type of girl. Yes. Yes, you are. (laughs) Through and through. (laughs) The day I met you. (laughs) And you were also, and I still wear like oversized everything. And you're like, why don't you wear your sizes? Like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. We used to play, am I wearing pants? She would, (laughs) because her shorts are so big. They just go over her shorts. (laughs) That's so funny. Okay, Uh, choose an accessory, a statement belt, very 2000s, a cowboy hat, star earrings, or sunglasses. I gotta say, I don't like the star earrings they chose. Can I pick my own? Because if I can, I'll choose possibly those, because I I love... Why not? (laughs) Okay, so here's why, because... It's not, they're not bad. Don't get oh, me no, wrong. Oh no, I'm saying why why not go ahead? Like why oh, not go ahead? Okay. Like we can pretend it's different earrings. <laughs> oh, okay, because I love like a statement neck like earring or neck not a necklace no, those, so much anymore. Those aren't cute. They're like are... hoops with star dangly things on them. And they're big hoops. It's so, not good. Yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the sunglasses. Okay. You can't go wrong with a good pair of sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read them, but that's great. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um. So which quote speaks to you? Go ahead and I think we should take turns and try to do the best impressions of these quotes that we can. <laughs> and you can do the first one. <laughs> I know, I was like getting into character. <laughs> You're a cheetah girl because of who you are and what's in your heart. That was really good. <laughs> I wear Prada and not a mama. Nada. <laughs> oh, I don't remember this one. But you, it's okay. Yeah. We'll try. I'm going to guess by the word honey, it was like her mom. Yeah. The cheetah girls follow their own dreams and nobody else is honey. I don't know. That felt weird. Either Why did her country with it? Oh, you didn't sound, you didn't sound country. You reminded me of drink a champagne. <laughs> So that's probably who said it. <laughs> You're probably right. Okay, ready? The final one. <laughs> if he can't respect my art, he can't have my heart. <laughs> okay, thank you for um, bearing with us for that. So, um, <laughs> which one are you uh, going with? Clearly, we're amazing. <laughs> um, oof. Uh, probably the I wear Prada or not a mama, because that moment is just really funny. It is. And I really like that one. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm between that one and the last one. That's a good one too, because I Cause like I'm the very, message. Like, either you're with me or you're away from me. <laughs> yeah, my attitude. I think I'm gonna go with that one. That's a good one. Okay, pick a meal. We have lo mein, pizza, barbecue, or paella. Wow, I'm glad you said that word because I would have been like. <laughs> hmm? living in arizona for 20 years helped me out with that what is that like what is it um it's kind of similar to like a gumbo or a jambalaya um so it's like a rice mixture with a bunch of stuff i think shrimp is in it or some sort of seafood because i don't eat it okay it looks interesting (laughs) but it's yeah it's a i want to say it's a mexican dish yeah some sort of latin dish okay what are you um, going with? Hmm. I'm gonna go with barbecue tonight. <laughs> sometimes pizza, but sometimes barbecue. Wait, why are we the same person? <laughs> the South is getting to me. Oh, because you get the best barbecue. Yes. I'm telling you, it's everything. Yeah, I, I'm missing that barbecue, and for some reason I'm craving it, so I'm going with that one too. We finally got found a good Mexican spot too, so I'm set. Yes. <laughs> That's always the best. Okay. Pick a Cheetah Girls song. Oof. So we got Cinderella, Strut, Girl Power, or The Party's Just Begun. Ugh. I'm going to nix out The Party Just yeah. Begun because it I'm doesn't feel there. like my favorite. <laughs> I'm already there. <laughs> um, 
I think I'm between Cinderella and Strut. Me too. I I love Cinderella, but also I kind of feel like it was kind of a scam growing up singing that. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could slay my dragon if you want to. I'm kind of tired. Yeah. Plus the music <laughs> video of Strut or like the... Like- I know. And like sometimes that's in my head and then it just boosts my mood and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to strut. You're right. I'm going to go yeah. strut. Oh low, my God, me too. <laughs> low key a bop. Yeah, that one. I mean, yeah, because Cinderella, yeah, they they definitely played us. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. Oh, she's a cheetah. So we have, <laughs> I feel like it was just copy and paste on Photoshop, but it's Ooh. not. Um, It's just a group of <laughs> cheetahs all sitting together um and then we got one that's like posed giving an over the shoulder look (laughs) very fierce um and then we have one running and then we have what looks like a cub and he's got like his paw over his eye very snuggly and cute i think i'm gonna go with that one posing over the shoulder (laughs) why are we the same person we do (laughs) they're gonna be like why are you guys doing oh okay I got Galleria. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> we got what we wanted. <laughs> so it says, okay. Galleria, you have big dreams and will stop at nothing to make them come true. Your talent and work ethic make you a force to be reckoned with. I feel like we started started at the bottom of Chanel. Now we're here at Galleria. It's true. <laughs> also, iconic moment in this like gif gif that they have yes. of her when she puts her sunglasses on and she walks away. Oh, <laughs> uh, I love it. Her in the cafeteria though reminds me of the awful scene where she's like, it's like a montage or whatever. And she's like talking to people in the cafeteria because she thinks she's famous. And the, she's getting on everyone else, like all the other oh, cheetah girls' nerves, yes. and she, her laugh. <laughs> is it, wait, this is from that, is it? I okay. think this is. Wait, this is the no. This is right before they do I the montage. That it was right when she says, "If he can't respect my art, he can't have my heart." And then she walks off. I thought that's what that was from. And is then, that, that... and then Aqua's like, "Oh, she loves him, or whatever." You might be right. Um, I think so. Put that but laugh. It, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I think it wasn't bad, but then, yeah, when you play it on a loop, it's like, shut up. Oh, so thanks for um, <laughs> sitting through this quiz with us, as always. And we'll catch you back <laughs> next week with some more spooky ooky. Next week, we're going to be discussing our top and possibly bottom. I gotta... We'll see. Um, but Disney villains. Yes. Uh, so we will catch you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to Two Finger Point, hosted by Amber Omar and Kylie Salmon. Created by Amber Omar and Kylie Salmon. Produced by Amber Omar. Engineered by Kylie Salmon. Social media managed by Kylie Salmon. Content created by Amber Omar and Kylie Salmon. Stay connected with us by following us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or YouTube at Two Finger Point Podcast with the number two spelled out T-W-O. You can also contact us by visiting our website at twofingerpointpodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast to have new episodes automatically downloaded to your device or to get alerts of our new episodes on YouTube. We'd greatly appreciate you reading and reviewing the podcast as well. You could be selected to have your review read on the podcast, like this review here from our friend Zoe. My Disney Podcast Fix. Amber and Kylie have put together the perfect podcast about all things Disney. Love to hear their banter, their opinions, their recommendations. And I love following along with their quiz at the end of each episode. You know it's a good podcast when you find yourself chiming in. Listening to them every week puts me feeling connected to the parks, even when I'm far away. Thanks, ladies. And thank you, Zoe, for your kind review. We will catch you next Tuesday for our next episode. But until then, have a magical day. Attention Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars fans. Are you searching for love in a galaxy far, far away? Then Meet Upon Maine is the ultimate dating and social networking site for you. 
Join thousands of fans who are making magical connections. Whether you're seeking a serious relationship or amazing new park buddies, Meet Upon Maine has it all. Build a profile to make magical matches, create new friendships, and bond over your shared passions, from epic lightsaber battles to heartwarming Disney moments. Embrace the thrill of finding someone who vibes with your fandom on a whole new level. Don't miss out on this enchanted opportunity. Make your dreams come true with Meet Upon Maine, where Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars fans connect. Sign up now and let the magic begin. Visit meetupponmaine.com and start your journey to a happily ever after. Meet Upon Maine is not affiliated with Disney, Marvel, or Lucasfilm. Please use responsibly and follow our community guidelines. Must be 18 years or older to join.